Chief Speed Senator. I were asking why it was so short. Better to have him ask why it was so long. Where's my limo? I called for it as soon as you mentioned God in country. That usually gets it here on time. Good. I want to be out of here before they finish this sherbet and come looking for favors. I'll try and wake up your chauffeur. No, no, I'll do it. You stay here. Dress up the picture. what I've said. You were right. Had no choice. None at all. Aren't you going to count it? You're a both honorable man. Don't you want to hear how I did it? Uh... Well, it goes off in the tire. When the tire heats up, the valve explodes. As you know, the ambassador will love to drive fast. Good morning. Get me Adderley. Yes, he's in his office, Mr. Greenspan. I told you use numbers. Well, last week it was letters. Never mind. Tell him number one wants to see him right away. Yes, Mr. Green. One. It happens every time you knock. Um, Mr. Greenspan wants to see you right away. Sure, why not? Show him in. No, he, he means in his office. Um, now. How's your day going, Mona? Oh, it's been... It's been good. Um, I'm reading the most marvelous book. Mm hmm Adderley, when are we ever gonna get, like, like a real case? Well, what about Greenspan's missing theater tickets? Or the lost luggage in agriculture. That was a hot one. Mona, this is miscellaneous affairs. In the book I'm reading, the spy's girlfriend has the plans for the atomic submarine tattooed on her. Sounds a little painful. Thank God life doesn't have to imitate art. <laughs> a tattooed on her... Uh, Mr. <laughs> he wants to talk to you. Come in. Sit down, B.H. I told him. Now look at V.H. You want to see me? Yes. And it's not for me to come to you. I'm the head of the department. What you got? Another dangerous assignment? Do you own a black suit? Whose funeral? It's for a wedding. The same thing. Anybody I know? Senator Thomas Woodside. 
That old fraud's getting married? It's his daughter's wedding. What do I do? Watch the silverware? The senator requested security coverage for the nuptials. There are no agents available because of the foreign affairs tour. Major Clack assigned it to Miss Lane's affairs, and I'm assigning it to you, if you have the proper suit. Navy blue okay? Fine. Senator's been told you're our top man. I'm our only man. In this case, you're just a physical presence to keep the senator happy. So try and stay out of trouble for once, please. How much trouble can I get into at a wedding? Why do you want security, anyway? Because he's got a big ego. The chauffeur got mugged. Choose one. The mugging is covered in the file. I read it. Interesting. Oh, really? Routine mugging. Broken neck, empty wallet. Tell me, Melville, if you were a mugger at a big fundraising party with every wallet stuffed and jewels on every neck, would you mug a chauffeur? Next time, don't park in my parking space. Two years. I concede to the senior senator seniority. <laughs> the race of kissing the rest of my life to you. Mm. Senator uh, Mr. Abbey is here. <laughs> the weddings had a lot of publicity. And there are plenty of nutcases around who'll do anything to get their pictures in the papers. No argument. So you're making a preliminary survey? Looking for problem areas? Sure you don't want anything? No, thanks. How many will be at the wedding? About 200. V.H. Adderley. What's the V.H. stand for? Victor Henry? Vernon Harrow? V.H. is good enough. How many men will you have here on the day? As many as we need. Why is your hand in your pocket? I like it that way. I want to see what you've got in your pocket. <laughs> and you're the best they've got. Better than an empty stall. Your chauffeur, the one who got killed. Had he been with you long? He was a limo driver. I'd had him a couple of days, a few political meetings, and I wanted to show my prospective son a lot of the sights. You think his death was important? It was to him. Well, I'm sure we'd never used him before. Wouldn't have again, either. Spent more of his time looking at the back seat through the rear view than watching the road. Your face is quite familiar. I always sat up front. It was Robin and Jean-Pierre he was staring at. Is that the lucky guy? Jean-Pierre Renault. French, intelligent, oh, charming, successful. Hard as I've tried, I can't hate him. I'm resigned to the marriage, but I'm not sure I'm going to like having him around so much. 
The senator's been fortunate. The major part of my courtship was conducted long distance. Yes, but Jean-Pierre is going to be shifting the base of his business here. Gradually. What do you do? International finance. You know, whatever people are desperate to sell, I buy at my price. What they must have, I sell at my price. And that's usually the same commodity? Exactly. Like the shop that buys junk and then sells antiques. <laughs> The senator was saying that the murdered chauffeur seemed to know you. Never seen her before in my life. It must have been a shock finding the body. It's an unusual case. You don't often find a mugger who knows the right way to break a man's neck. Senator? Sorry. Natalie, you're supposed to stay with the senator. Check him out? Yeah. What is he? Surte? Interpol. MI5? CIA? He's nothing at all. I spoke to Daphne in Central Records. Jean-Pierre Renault is unknown to the intelligence community. Oh, I love that phrase, intelligence community. You're onto something really big this time, aren't you? Did you run his description through ICOM? If he changed his name? No, he'd have it on his passport. He has a French passport in his own name. Now, well, according to immigration, he came in uh, two weeks ago Wednesday. From? Orly, Paris to the capital. And he was there for a week, and then he came here four days ago which would put him in the capital about the same time the French ambassador was killed. I want the rest of his travel arrangements for the last year. Daphne will have it. I told you it was a good idea for me to take care of her cat when she went to Bermuda. Great. I also want a list of any political assassinations that took place anywhere near wherever he was, here or abroad. Molly. Afternoon, sir. You're supposed to stay at the senator's. I'm checking in with my superior. Isn't that proper protocol? Any report could have been phoned in. Phoned in? You mean they gave you a secure line? You said something about a report, then report. I want Major Clack to hear this. I'll decide who hears it. I believe that the senator's daughter is going to marry a hitman. Are you serious? I wouldn't kid you, Melville. And I want to report that to the Major. Of course you do. And we both know why. It's out of the question. Okay. But have you considered what'll happen to miscellaneous affairs if I write? If the Senator's daughter should marry a hitman at a wedding that we provide security for and the Major isn't even informed? What makes you so certain he is a hitman? I can smell it. I didn't know paid assassins gave off a distinctive aroma. They do to me. I've been watching this guy. He's no paper pusher. The guy moves like a cat. He's very cool. I will set a meeting for us with the Major. assassinations took place. Could have left some kind of trail over there. And you'd like a Beretta, a passport, and a credit card to go look for it. Somebody asked you. You know what bores me more than anything else, Adderley? It's when someone who's not as smart as me gets the idea that he's smarter. You think I don't know what you're trying to pull? I think you think so. I know so. Miscellaneous affairs isn't the bottom of our pile. We got departments for cast-offs. We're going to get their mail delivered at Christmas. Then why don't you retire me as a has-been? Or do I know too much? Oh, don't get touchy, Adderley. Nobody's forgotten your achievements when you're our number one. But things change. Heroes become former heroes. Some make comebacks. And maybe you will someday. And maybe you'll avenge that someday. 
But you gotta stop trying to parlay every routine junk assignment into an international crisis just to get yourself back over there. What if I'm right about Jean-Pierre Renault? You aren't. And the odds? 500 to 1. A thousand. You're on. Renault's clean, you get a box of those Havana cigars you love so much. And if he isn't? I'm in East Berlin. I love sucker bets. I'm afraid I'm not exactly William Tell. Oh, I knew it. You also play the piano like Vladimir Horowitz? More like David Horowitz. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Adderley, why don't you have a go? Not my game. Oh, come on, try. I suggested it. I apologize. Okay. You win, Mr. Adderley. It's always been my problem. Yours too, I think. I never take a second shot till someone beats my first. Stars? No, there's more than that. Minutes till the wedding. That's what you're counting, wasn't it? How did you know? Yeah. Wedding's Friday noon. That's 3,190 minutes to change your mind. Why would I want to change my mind? I didn't say you would, but... Once those minutes are gone... I don't have any doubts. Okay. Well, I did before I met Jean-Pierre. <laughs> then you found out that married people live longer? Do they really? <laughs> That's what the books say. Uh, maybe it just seems longer. Hmm. That sounds like the cynicism of a divorced man. Never married. Gets in the way of my archery practice. <laughs> What happened to your hand? You don't want to know. Please tell me. Some other time, maybe. Good night, Mr. Adderley. Please get some sleep. Right. I have to go into town. You keep an eye on Miss Woodside? Robin always has my undivided attention. <laughs> Why don't you take mine? Be much quicker. She'll do 140, if you can handle her.
went over all this with the police. Now you're going over it with me. What's miscellaneous affairs? I'm your tax dollars at work. Read the fine print. Read fast. Well, as long as you're with the government. That's him. The late Theodore Clancy. How long did he work here? About a week. Where'd he come from? We just asked him our last job. They got a chauffeur's cap, a license, and a shave they drive. What was his last job? In the capital, the French embassy. French embassy? Yeah. His last employer. Hey, wasn't that where that ambassador was killed? What do you have to anyway? Thanks. Used, Adderley. You don't give me orders. I, I have to show him something, Melville. And if I have to show it to him on the street, then I'm gonna have to tell him that you wouldn't set up the meeting, and that could be terribly embarrassing. What could you show? You'll see it when he sees it. I'll be in Clack's office in an hour. for my birthday, any year. Oh, you had a flat. I put on the spare. Much obliged. Don't mention it. Damn it, Adderley. Your assignment is security at a wedding, and you come in talking of wasps and wine glasses. You can't listen with your mouth open, Melville. I'm telling you, the guy killed a wasp before anyone even saw the wasp. He grabbed a wine glass out of midair without getting a drop on him. He adjusts to things while they are happening. Great. We'll arrest him on a charge of being nimble. Nimble? I'm talking about zero reflex time, and there's only two occupations that call for that, intelligence operatives and hitmen. And we've already established he's not in intelligence. And what about this? What is it? It's a heat-sensitive explosive device. Standard issue in many agencies, including some you've worked for. You sure you didn't forget to turn this in? Damn it, Adderley. If you're withholding department... Melville, this particular model has some refinements added after I left the field, and Renault tried to kill me with this one the same way he killed the French ambassador. Oh, for crying out loud. Make my... yourself a drink, Melville. No ice in mine, Melville. You, sit down. I figured the chauffeur spotted him at the embassy. Perfectly possible. More than that, perfectly reasonable. In your place, I might draw the same conclusion. But I'm not in your place. And this organization can't act on your hunch. This is more than a hunch. The guy is dirty. 
It's more than a hunch, less than a case. I can't go upstairs in the unsupported word of an agent. Forgive me, Adderley. An agent will do or say anything to get back into the field. Are you calling me a liar? No. I think I believe you. You think? But I can't make anybody else believe. Get me something solid. Get me a smoking gun. Evidence. Not a story, no matter how closely reasoned. You tell the boys in the print shop to get started on my East German visa. If you deliver, I'll deliver. This mess. Are there any olives? Melville, you and I better have a little talk. Sensational. Take a bow, Marie. <laughs> now, there's something we have to talk about. Official stuff. Top secret. It's okay. We can talk in front of Marie. No, I know we can, but I have to follow orders. Do you mind? It's a fantastic dress. Yes, thank you. So, what's so highly confidential? It's just between us, okay? Okay. okay. Well? I think you might be making a mistake. What about? The dress. But you just said it was sensational. It is, but it might be sort of... Sort of what? Sort of premature. What in the world are you talking about? Well, any guy that marries a senator's daughter has to have the proper clearance. Mm -hmm. Mr. Renault's hasn't come through yet, so I'd like you to postpone the wedding. I see. And just what exactly am I supposed to tell the 200 guests I've invited? It was always the truth. How well do you know your fiancé? Excuse me? Well, let me put it this way. How long have you known your fiancé? Nine months. Um, sort of off and on because he travels so much. And what does he do for a living? International finance. You know, government papers, stocks and bonds. So he says. Are you calling him a liar? Have you ever been to his office? I don't think he has an office. You really don't like Jean-Pierre, do you? Oh, I do. And I think he likes me just as much. And why are you doing this? I don't know exactly. Partly because it's my job. Partly because if you postpone the wedding, you might give me a fighting chance. Mr. Adderley, I won't mention this conversation to my father or to my fiancé. And I'm getting married the day after tomorrow exactly as planned. And thank you for what you just said. Yeah, nobody could blame me for trying. Uh, Miss Robin, your father is waiting for you in the study. You said you wanted to see some samples from some wedding photographers? whenever you're finished. Thank you, Lamont. Mr. Adderley was just leaving. Thank you. 
Makes sense. Uh, there's a phone call for you, sir. Yeah, and Daphne wanted to know why I needed the information, so I told her top security. Yeah, right, okay. Uh, besides being in the capital when the ambassador was killed, he just happened to be in Milan on February 11th when Signor Rossini was found dead in his apartment. Broken neck. Keep talking. Vienna, June 21st. British Vice Consul was assassinated, blamed on a radical group. And how was he killed? A high-powered rifle. Any more? Yep, Dublin, August 20th. Same time a NATO general disappeared, and that's it. Uh-huh, good work, Mona. One more thing, very important. Yeah, shoot. Did the Blue Jays take the night game on the coast? Seven nothing. <laughs> good, Mona, thank you. And thank Daphne and thank her cat. Hang on a second while I get my book. Okay. Uh, forget it, Mona. Good night. Night. Anything else you want to know? I've known Miss Robin all her life. I devoted to her. I'd do anything to protect her. What well, makes you think she needs protecting? That's why the senator sent for you, isn't it? I thought that was maybe something concerning her. Does Mr. Renault get a lot of overseas calls? And what do you mean? Well, some habits are hard to break. Cutting your nails, smoking, listening to other people's phone calls. I don't know anything about Mr. Renault's business. He's had quite a lot of overseas calls since he's been staying here. London, and Milan, and Copenhagen. What about Vienna? Jean-Pierre's never been there. That's why they're honeymooning there. I see. He did get one call last night from Geneva, but they spoke in German. And you don't understand German? Couldn't happen to thank her, that kind of thing. What about names? They mention any names? Only yours.
Okay, we want a straight line, but we want it staggered. Just like there, like that. And you two change places because you're a little taller. That's good. Good, very good. Now, where's that pretty little flower girl of ours? <laughs> Any person here present knows just cause why these two may not wed. Let them speak now or forever, and so on. Uh, that part no longer is required. I kind of like it, but it's your choice. I love it. Take it out. Well, and then we have, we are joined, uh, etc. And uh, uh, do you, Robin, and do you, Jean-Pierre, and so on. And I do, and I do. And then we have the ring. Oh, uh, the best man is not with us. Um, Excuse me, sir, uh, could you stand here for one minute, please? Thank you. Now, uh, where were we? Ah, uh, yes, uh, the ring. Uh, see, then you turn to take it. Uh, no, uh, the other way. That's it, the other way, to the right. That's it. And now the best man gives him the ring. Happy honeymoon. Monsieur Reynaud, uh, this way. That's better. And now, with this ring, the ring on her finger, that's correct. Uh, excuse me, sir, just one minute. We're not finished yet. Oh, excuse me, I have to call the office. I think I unlocked something for them. Well, uh, then we come to the last part of the ceremony, and now you may kiss the bride. Jean-Pierre? The last part, uh, kiss the bride. Of course. Excuse me. Jean-Pierre? Uh, Monsieur Reynaud, uh, oh, my goodness. Yes, Mona? It's Adderley. All right, I'll take it. What is it, the agent? I want you to get a message to Clack. What's the message? Tell him I'm his new boy in Berlin. I don't deliver vague messages. So if you don't have anything more specific, I'm busy. Renault claims he's never been to Vienna, but his passport says otherwise. I don't call that very specific. Well, how about a key? Probably to an airport locker. Do you know anything about airport lockers, Melville? We get to the point. Well, the ones in Vienna have a funny-shaped key. I'm looking at one right now. It's got a funny shape, but I'm not laughing. Do you want to make a little side bet as to what's in that locker, Melville? I'd say it's been disassembled as a telescopic sight and a silencer. Listen, number one. Are you telling me you checked with Vienna? Don't call me number one. And what they say when they open the locker? What the hell are you talking about? So I am dealing with a killer here. Who are you trying to impress? Don't pull any of that stuff with me, Pete. I'll need backup. You'll need more than that when Clack gets through with you. I can get by with three men. I'll leave here in a few minutes. You'll stay at your assignment. Adderley? Adderley. I believe you have something of mine. Yeah, I do. Jean-Pierre, what's going on? We haven't finished yet. In a moment. Mr. Adderley and I have something to discuss. Get it, it'll keep. Besides, I have an appointment. So thanks for the help, but, uh... I do my own tune-ups.
Jean-Pierre, I have to talk to you. Later. This is important. There's some things I have to know. Later. No, now. I have to know the kind of man I'm marrying. One who appreciates his privacy. meeting you here. Mr. Adderley, you are making my life very difficult. I know. The wedding, the arrangements, you got a lot in your plate right now. Another killing would be hard to explain. I've had bigger problems. I bet. Tell me, what's harder? Killing someone with a high-powered rifle or making a general disappear? I'm well paid to keep that to myself. I guess you'll want this to look like an accident. Does the car go with me? I'm afraid it must. Oh, too bad. It's almost a classic. Still, gives the story more credibility. I found it teetering on the edge. I tried to pull you out before it went over. But unfortunately, I failed. Of course, there's a problem with getting me into it. No problem. One last question. Make it brief. What are you going to tell her? Jean-Pierre! Your life just gets more complicated all the time, doesn't it? What's going on? We've got a man here who doesn't like baseball. Shut up, Adderley. No, I think we should explain. We wouldn't want the young lady to get the wrong idea. See, I'm on my way to see some people about your fiance. Now, he can either let me go and face the consequences, or he can make sure I never make that meeting. Unfortunately, if he does that, he'll have to kill you, too. Can you do that, Jean-Pierre? Can you kill the woman you love? You forget how I make my living, Mr. Adderley. You forget how I make mine, Mr. Renault. Two hands are still better than one. And then, according to your report, you lost control of the car, spun out, leaving you at the edge. And this fellow, Renault, tried to save you and went over the edge in the process. Is that the truth? No. The truth is, he was a hit man. He tried to kill me and I killed him. Sarcasm isn't going to help, Adderley. I want the truth. You got it, buddy. In this report? Well, you're my superior. You can make your own judgment. My own judgment tells me you screwed up. Somehow. That's entirely possible. Dismissed. Why did you lie, Adderley? Was it on account of the girl? Well, maybe I didn't want to drag her name through the papers. Maybe I didn't want to wreck her father's career. Maybe I'm happier here than in Europe. Oh, no, that last one's a lie. Well, anyways, I just want you to know I still think you're, you're wonderful. Wonderful or not, I still owe Clack a box of cigars. Oh, I know where his secretary gets them a discount. 
I knew I could count on you, Mona. I, I, I really, though, I can't get over you feeling you had to say you were wrong. I mean, this is a terrible job. It has its moments. If you're ever in Vienna, check that out. <laughs>